At this point in our cup demo, we have a base that we flattened out with the thickness part of our hand, and we also have three coils added. I've attempted to make the thickness of the wall the same all the way around, even though the outside texture is still rough. I'm not going to, in this video, continue making all of the coils for time purposes, but I'm going to show you what I would do in the case that I had added all my coils. Now, depending on what type of cup you want your students to make, that will determine how many coils they will use. I would advise on the first cup lesson that one of the requirements or parameters be that the cup is taller than it is wide. However, you can choose what type of cup that is. It could be a tall, thin cup. It could be a wider cup that's just a little bit taller than it is wide. It's completely up to you. But for this one, I'm gonna show you how to address the rim once you get to that point where you're ready to quit adding coils. So at that point, I would get maybe a half a coil or a very thin coil. I'll roll this one out again. I was advised when making a cup to always add a very thin coil to the inside rim of your cup. Once it fires, it'll become very light and you don't want the rim of your cup to be so thin that when it hits other clay pieces or it exists in real life in your cupboard, that it would chip. And so I had this thin coil and I'm going to pinch it gently the same way that I would all the others. until it's incorporated in the clay, I would begin smoothing it. We haven't talked about weight of the cup yet, but I think you'll notice that your walls at this point are much thinner than your base. And one way that we can counteract that weight is by adding this small coil around the rim of the cup. So I have my small coil now. I'm going to go ahead and score the edges again, just to be safe. I can be pretty aggressive with my score marks. Um, if I'm using a needle tool, it's more precise. I could also use a version of this scraping or smoothing tool that has a serrated edge, which is like a zigzag, and it will do this for me. And so I can just hold it here with the serrated edge and it'll create these marks. That's up to you if you wanna purchase it. If not, you can always use the knife or the needle tool. And at this point, I will take my smoothing tool and I will start at the bottom and I will begin going around the cup. Now, I'm gonna show you what happens if my hands are not on the inside. Do you see the scraping tool altering the form? To keep that from happening, I like to put my hands, I wanna make sure this is evenly pinched really quickly, on the inside and pull the tool from the base up. On the first time that you go around and use your scraping tool, it doesn't matter the direction that you choose. You can go and experiment. Is it easier to do it one way versus the next? Is one position of the scraping tool more precise than the other? I find that when I wanna get rid of really deep marks, I'll use this side of it, but when I wanna smooth quickly towards the end of this process, I'll come from the bottom straight up but it's completely up to you how you decide to do this. Okay, what we have now is probably the first smoothing session complete. I would probably go over this three to five times depending on how smooth you want your work to be. I think that at a minimum, you should try to get rid of all the scratch marks that you've made unless they're decorative. And at the most, you can continue this process, the smoothing process, once the piece is hardened some. When the piece is leather hard, 
this will give a very nice finish. You could also use a silicone version of these that would make it very smooth. And so right now I'm going to leave my sides because this is just for demonstration purposes, a little rough. And I'm going to address the rim of my cup. That'll probably be the last thing that you all would do. Typically, the rim is what I try to touch last. I don't want to pinch it too much because if it gets really thin in some areas, that's the first thing you're going to notice when you pick it up and touch it towards your lips. The rim might be the most intimate part of your cup because it is what first touches your mouth. And so we want to be very careful with our rim. Typically, you're just going to, while it is in this wet clay stage, form it into the general shape and smooth it to where there isn't a line going around. And so I might smooth mine first, ensuring as I go that it's about the same thickness all the way around. And at this wet clay stage point, I would also perhaps come in and do the final bit of pinching. So you know that we, when we added this together, we did our typical pinching movement, but I wanna show you that when this cup touches your mouth, you want it to mirror the shape of your mouth. And so if you hold your finger and your thumb together, you can see that it makes almost a lip shape. That's going to be foundational in forming your rim. And so I'll take, instead of both sets of hands, just my finger and my thumb and go around and pinch the clay that way. You'll notice how the inside of the cup now has a slant with a diagonal line. This will be much nicer when it touches the mouth than a blunt edge or a sharp edge or a thin edge. And so right now I would do any final smoothing during the wet stage. Again, I may have addressed this side and all of the sides probably two to three more times with my hand on the inside to avoid any changing in the form before I move to the trimming segment.